What's up guys, it's Johnny Candido of Candido Training HQ. Today I'm going to talk about a subject that's somewhat controversial, and that is, what is the genetic limit for size and strength for natural athletes? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description to an article on this topic and really just discuss my opinion on this because there really is no clear-cut answer when it comes to this question. See, my main issue with these genetic limit calculators is that people act as if this is solid scientific evidence for a concrete limit. And that would just be a fundamental distortion of what science really is because you're taking such a small pool of athletes I don't think any one of these calculators is based off of more than 70 athletes and you're going to use that to make a judgment on over 6 billion people. I know science is inherently inductive which means you're taking specific information and applying it to the group but this is just stretching the limits and making any exact estimation just an arbitrary number when it comes down to the specifics. And also the assumption that all the athletes tested are somehow at their genetic limit is just extremely unrealistic. You're essentially saying that they cannot do anything better, that they have absolutely perfect biomechanics on every single exercise, they have perfect programming, the volume on every single workout, the uh, frequency of every single exercise, the exercise selection, their nutrition, just everything is absolutely perfect and they can make no improvements whatsoever and they're also at the exact prime age-wise. So that's why that any calculator that gives an exact limit is far from factual. However, I do say the model that I like the most is the McDonald model. And that's because his is just based on how much progress you can make given a certain period of time. He breaks it down in terms of years. It really gives a more accurate representation of what's actually going on. See, a lot of people perceive this genetic limit as some type of barrier that you just slam into it and now you can't make any more progress. I've literally seen some people who are 19, 20 years old who think they've hit their genetic limit. And that's just stupid. What actually happens is you just make progress and you keep making progress but it just gets slower and slower until then you finally start hitting the aging process obviously if you're around 38, 40, 42 so you don't keep making progress until the day you die. So I think that that model is very useful and overall all these models are actually useful in my opinion because they do give you an idea of at least what is excelling naturally. Maybe it's not the actual limit but it's at least what is good to far above average because a lot of times nowadays people take steroids and they often lie about it as most people already know this and they use it for marketing and whatnot and this kind of distorts people's perception of what's possible and what's actually good and that gets to another point that there is no way to find out what's possible naturally using any modern testing because we simply cannot properly test for steroid use it's just not possible. All these steroid tests are honestly worthless and I'm a drug tested athlete and I'm telling you that. And being able to see who is lying about drug use and claiming that they're natural is actually important in my opinion because what often happens is that these people, as I said, they distort the perception but this has a practical effect as well. What happens is that then the people watching them start to try to bulk up way more than they really should because now all of a sudden they think they can get to 220, 250, 260 pounds of pure muscle and what usually happens is they're actually 130, 140 pounds of lean body mass so you just get extremely overweight. Another point I want to make is that for some reason whenever people look at things more objectively and try to take a more scientific approach they tend to forget some of the basic emotional components to any sport because I see whenever people analyze the big picture they act as if everything's just set in stone and they forget the importance of not only programming but then also the just focus over years and years. So just keep that in mind. If you're just training to look a little bit better or just to get stronger for a sport and are doing other things on the side, then you really don't want to compare yourself too much to someone who spent their entire life all of their training on simply just getting as strong as possible. And that brings me to my last point. I don't want to talk about body composition now but just pure strength and what is possible naturally. See, in my opinion, it's easier to excel in the sport of powerlifting than even natural bodybuilding because I see strength is less limited by drug use. See, with bodybuilding, there's a certain look they're trying to achieve, and all these different drugs can help them in different ways. But powerlifting, it's more of an even playing field, in my opinion, especially if you're in a lower weight class like 165 or 183, then there's only so much muscle mass you can put on while staying in that weight class and there's less factors when it comes to actually what you need to win. 
All you need to do is just keep increasing your strength. Of course, drugs will help a great deal in powerlifting as in any other strength sport, but that's just my opinion. I think it's just a little bit easier to excel in powerlifting naturally than it is in bodybuilding naturally. And to give you an example of someone who does just that, excels in powerlifting naturally, take a look at Ben Rice. I'll include a link to his YouTube channel in the description. Now, I personally have no doubt in my mind that he is a real natural athlete. And the reason why I believe this isn't because of drug tests, because as I told you, those are worthless. The reason why I believe that he is actually natural is because he isn't trying to sell you anything. He's not trying to be some superstar persona. He's just a real quality, high character person, and you can tell that from his videos. So if you look at some of his strength numbers, and especially for his young age, he's in his early 20s, you see what is actually possible naturally is quite amazing. He is pulling well over 700 pounds, and he would be among the elite in the world even if he was untested. So that backs up my previous point, that in my opinion, as a natural, you have a better chance competing in powerlifting than bodybuilding. Because you would never see that in bodybuilding. You would never see a natural bodybuilder being able to compete against an untested bodybuilder. That simply just would never happen. So overall, guys, the point of this video is that we do not know an actual concrete genetic limit for what can be achieved naturally. Now obviously there is a limit, everything has limits, but we just don't know of it. So don't be too conservative about what you can actually achieve naturally, but you also need to find a middle ground because there will be people on steroids lying to you. There will be 260 pound men telling you that they eat top ramen and now they're huge or that overtraining doesn't exist and now they have huge arms. Those lies do exist, but you just need to navigate through and not be too skeptical as a result. So that's it guys, I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching guys. Peace! We want substance in the place of popularity. We want to think our own thoughts. We want love, not lies.